So as you all know, I love building in The Sims, but have a huge passion for storytelling. And so whenever I'm building, I always have to craft a storyline for The Sims that live there. So that way when I'm decorating, it makes sense. So I thought today, why not show you how I build in The Sims 4? Now I'm gonna tell you right here, right now, I'm not the best at explaining things. And so hopefully what you learned from this video today, you can apply to your own building skills when you build your own houses, community lots, and maybe even craft a unique storyline for your build. But I'm currently in the town of Brindlin Bay, my favorite coastal town world. I'm only 64 by 64 lot because I'm gonna try and build three different styles of houses just to kind of give you all an idea of like how I build differently. I'm not gonna furnish them just because I feel like if I did, it would take me 10,000 hours to do them. So I'm just gonna build the general like shell floor plan and also maybe kind of give you an idea of what each room will be like. So the first thing I wanna build is a starter friendly home for at least two Sims. So that way I can kind of get the basics out the way and then go crazy ham with the other advanced builds as I would call them. Because usually starter homes really don't have a lot of money in their budget and they're a lot easier to build and sometimes also easier to roof as well. So whenever I'm building in The Sims 4, I always go with a generic box and then adding small little bump outs on each side to give it that 3D dimension look that I'm trying to go for. So that way the home looks more like a home rather than like a standard box. Plus it gives me room to play around with like the landscaping and the trees and the orientation on the outside. Like sometimes I'll have like a box on the end or sometimes I'll have it like in the middle. All of my houses end up being very symmetrical because I kind of like having that symmetrical look so I know how to roof my build. But I think for this one, I kind of want to go with something like this but I do like how it is on the end because this gives me a chance to like maybe add another side porch or do like a wraparound porch or something to give it some pizzazz, I don't know. But for the layout, I usually try to envision who's going to live here. So like two Sims, two bedrooms, one bathroom, open floor plan for the kitchen, living room and dining room. But then eventually changes over time as I'm trying to figure out the layout. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the foyer area like maybe over here. And then for the side bathroom, like hallway bathroom will be mostly like right here. And then the bedroom will be right here. Another small bedroom would be like mostly right here for like a kid's bedroom or like a toddler's room, something like that. But then normally when I have this funky layout, I hate it immediately. So I end up opening up everything where this could be like the kitchen, small dining room and then living room could be like right here. So what I could probably do is maybe do something like this on a diagonal. So that way I can put a sponge roll right in the middle of here and then adding in two columns to give it that, you know, structured beam look. <laughs> Cause normally in real houses, you just don't have a straight up beam with no support of a column or anything, but you can do whatever you want in The Sims. I normally just do this because it's easier, but I kind of like how I use two different styles of columns. Usually these are the ones from base game. All of my houses end up being base game at the start and then I add other packs in between. So now that we have the layout done, we have to add in our doors so that way we know where everything's gonna be placed, including the bathroom, because usually for my bathrooms, I don't do anything fancy. I do a shower tub combo, a sink, and a toilet and bada bing, bada boom, they are done. But once I usually have that done, I like to do my roofing and then I do all of my windows and decorating afterwards because once I have my roofing done, I can stress less and just have fun and be creative and decorate how I so please. So usually if I build a house in this style, I usually go with one style of roof and it's usually the gabled roof I like the most. And so I'm going to go ahead and drag this all the way up to the front I'm gonna move it down a few notches cause it seems a little bit too pointy at the beginning. And then I'm gonna copy and pasta the same roof piece to the side piece, push it back. And you can kind of see it's overlapping on this side. Normally I would leave it, but I don't like how it's overlapping. And so I'm gonna push it all the way over here. And then I'm gonna push the Eve in on one side by holding down my shift key on my keyboard and then kind of just leave it just like this. And I kind of like this little side piece right here for like a chimney, but since I was gonna make this part like a kitchen, I might move it. 
Normally I would just take it up and probably move it to like the front part over here and copy the same room onto the top. So that way it looks a little bit more different. And normally whenever I see like flat sides of a house that I'm building, I always have to add something to it like a porch or like extra trees just to cover up those corners and those side pieces. But I think for this home, I wanna add in like a little side porch in the front and also in the back. So that way I have a bit more dimension and I can use more roof pieces. So what we're gonna do is build the ceiling and then we're gonna copy the same roof piece to the front and then push the eve out by one by holding down our shift key. And normally when you see this little corner piece right here, there's a trick of getting rid of it by copying the same roof piece twice. And so what we're gonna do is push this eve in out by, or in by one, and then we're gonna push it right about, and we're gonna push it right about like right here Copy the same roof piece right here. And then we're gonna push this eave up by one. And there you go. You have successfully taken out that little corner piece by using two roof pieces. But we're gonna do the same thing on the other side by copying this roof piece, actually build the ceiling first and then copy the same roof piece, rotate it. And then we're going to shrink it a little bit so it fits the same. Push this eave forward copy this roof piece, actually copy this roof piece instead, and then push this eave up, and then there you go. But once you got that done, we're gonna push the foundation up by a few notches. And normally what I'll do is I'll add my foundation color first, so I can kind of get an idea of what the general siding will look like. Cause I change my mind quite often. I have ADHD, I have all this creative energy in my brain that I wanna put out into my own build, but then sometimes it does not make any sense. But we're gonna leave this for now. We're gonna make it a standard suburban starter home for a family of like two. We're gonna copy the same columns and put them in the front, but also in the back. And then we are also gonna do the same spandrels all the way around. So that way it looks a little bit more together. And usually I end up going with a simple picket fence because it's a lot easier and it looks nicer. And normally you can have the fence automatically put the fence wherever you want. But if you want to have more manual control, you can actually just click this button right here and then draw out the fence however length you want it. And I'm going to just do it like this so I can put my stairs right here and then another column right there. We're going to do the same for the backing, but this time I'm going to just drag it out right here and then put that right there. And I think I might just take out one. So I can have two staircases right there. So it seems a little bit more easier. And then we'll copy the same column. And now this seems a little bit awkward because normally I would have a door right here, but now I'm gonna have a door right here. So what I'm gonna do, this is usually what happens. I do a lot of building mistakes pretty much all the time. And I'm probably gonna leave this mistake in because it seems a lot more funnier and a lot easier. But we're gonna leave this right here so that way we can put our door right there, maybe a little like plant in the corner, maybe like another window right here for the bathroom or just on the side, whatever your preference is. And since this is technically just a base game home, I'm gonna put the standard base game door that I like using all the time, which is the arch door with double panes. And it just looks cool. And then for the back, I usually end up going with this exterior door with a multiple pane window right there because that way I can kind of figure out you know, counters right here, fridge right here, maybe a stove like right here, or just kind of playing around with the general like structure of the interior. But usually I like to have a placeholder so that way I know what each room is. And I think I will add in the windows for the kitchen so that way I can kind of get a vision of where I wanna place my windows. Cause normally I'll end up having like too big of a windows in the kitchen or too small windows in the bathroom and nothing makes sense. And so I'm gonna put maybe like a, three counter right here. And then I'll have like a fridge like right, mostly like right here. I'll move these down so that way I can put like a stove right smack dab in the middle right here. And then I end up adding in my cabinets afterwards. I'm gonna do this one right here so it's a little bit more easier. But I also will put this one right here and do a regular square one right there. And then I end up having some more like maybe like a table and chairs like right there. So that way I have my kitchen and dining room already set in stone. So we'll have a table right here and then we'll have the two chairs or I guess three chairs like right there. So we have your standard like kitchen and dining room already prepared. 
your living room would mostly just be like in this general like square angle right here so that way you can end up having a couch like right here or actually you can have like a couch like right here you can move these things right here for your fake chimney if you so please because this is a good way to kind of figure out where you want to place things before you kind of make a final decision so you can have like a couch like right here smacked up in the center and then you can have a fireplace right there a tv right there and then you can end up placing like your windows right on the side if you so please if you kind of like are happy with what you're trying to go for i'm going to press my f5 button on my keyboard so that way i can Put them up by quarter tiles so that they were all even and just put them all around the build so it makes sense. But I think I'll just leave them right there. Well, not that low, but this high, like right around here seems good enough to me. And then we'll use the same windows, put one in the bedroom right here and we'll put two right in the, f in the side, one right in the center and then one right in the center as well but i think i might just do two as well so it looks more uniform from the front to the back but essentially this is like your home this is your home away from home in the sims 4. but first i'm going to add my roof pattern so that way i have some vision of what i want to go for and then i add in my roof trim to all the roof pieces that i've placed and then i do all of my wallpaper at the very last second now, since this is technically a roof like siding chimney, I always end up adding some type of like brick. So it just makes sense right there. And then for the general siding of the whole home, I'm going to use a standard one from base game. I might go with gray. Ooh, gray looks sad. Tan? No. Pink? Sure, why not? Let's go with pink. So what I'm gonna do is hold down my Alt key on my keyboard so that way I can paint only one side of my wall. But let's hold down our Alt key on our keyboard and just continue to paint the walls so we have more control right here, there, and there. Ooh, missed a piece. Now on this side right here, it is like a standard room, but I wanna separate it and normally I'll add like a column right there. I need to paint this side right here. And I want to make this more like a blue or a white or something that kind of looks good. So let's see what it looks like in blue or actually green. Ooh, a green looks very nice. Blue and green. Wow, this looks very, very cool and very cute. See, when you miss and match your wallpaper, you kind of have like a little funky vision so now that we're done with the starter home i want to do a very advanced type of home that's two stories it's something that i kind of think of as like strangerville homes or victorian homes and i love that style because they have like wraparound porches and so we're kind of going to build the same general style but add more bump outs and more different features of roofing because i think the more you practice with your roofing the easier it somewhat gets because for me i hate roofing more than anything and something that I struggle with is figuring out how to shape my shell correctly to fit the roof that I want. But I look at a lot of inspiration like online, like on Tumblr or Pinterest, or like looking at different builds on the gallery or builds from like different videos on YouTube. It just generally depends on like what I'm really looking for, but it's hard. And so I always say start small and then work your way up. And there's no shame if like having mistakes with your roofing or your layouts. It's all about having fun with what you're building. Now, usually when I look at Victorian homes, I see like this very interesting like triangular bump out and I end up using like an octagonal type roof and it looks really cool but essentially it's hard because when you want to do a certain type of roof it's like what roof piece do you use but essentially this is like my general shell of my home that I really do like that I want to use and so we're going to do a wraparound porch leading from like this part right here to like this side piece right here so we're going to add in a flat square all the way around. I think I'm going to just do it from up here and then make this a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to add the ceiling and the roof piece that I typically use to get that wraparound porch feel 
is I use the half hipped roof and I just kind of drag it from one side to the end and then it is way too dang big. So I move it down like a few notches. So it's like a little bit small, but like not too big. And then I copy the same roof piece to the other end over here. Now, typically I would leave it like this, but I wanna cover up these little side bits to make them all uniformed. And so I use the half gabled roof. I rotate it to the side that I need. I move it down. So it kind of fits together and then I push all of the eaves in so it looks just like that. And then I copy the same piece to the other side just like that. And see, it looks pretty much uniform, good to go, a little fancy. And I do like these little flat sides, but you know me, the more bump outs, the more interesting it looks. And so I'm going to actually make another bump out, like maybe something like here, and then another bump out kind of like right in the middle. Cause it looks different, but once you add that roof, it's like, ooh, bada bing, bada boom, it's something fancy. But at the same time, I have no clue what I'm doing. I'm just talking and words are coming out. But we have the front piece done. Let's do the back part. We're gonna add the ceiling and then we're going to add the half gabled roof in the back because it seems a little bit more easier to use that roof piece. And then we're gonna move it down just by bit. Now for the top part of the roofing, what we're gonna use is the gabled roof. And I'm gonna do this side. Actually, no, I think I wanna do the same roof piece, but do it in the front. Yeah, I'll do it in the front. Move it down just a tad bit and then copy and pasta. Well, use the half hipped roof on this side. Move it up, move it down and then move it forward just like that. And I do wanna push the eaves out on this part. So I'm gonna go to the corner, pull them out and then go ahead and use the same roof piece in the front, but make it tad bit smaller. And then for the side bit, a fancy trick that I tend to do a lot is I use the eight sided uh, roof, the octonical roof, and we just put it right here. But to make it more uniform to match like the roof on this side is that we use the half hipped roof or the gabled roof. We use the gabled roof and then we kind of align it up to fit the same height as the octonical roof. And then you're basically there. But to cover up these little edges right here, what I like to do most of the time is I add a trim around the entire build to give it that more, of course, dimension that I always end up saying. And what's really cool about this lovely trick that I like to show and tell all the time is that if you wanna have more control of where your trim is going, like for example, by default, when you place down a trim, it's going to place it wherever you have your cursor. But if you wanna have more control, just hold down your shift key and then you will have more control of where the trim is being placed, which is what I prefer because sometimes I don't want trim all around. So holding down the shift key gives you more of a control, which is nice. I like having control over my own sim builds because when the game does it, it makes it look funky. And I don't like funky builds unless I do it intentionally. But before we even do our layout, we need to add in the stairs. And something I like to do first and foremost when I'm doing a two level home, I like to always do the stairs from the second floor so I know where the landing is going and then hold down my control key so that way I know where the landing is going for the stairs. So it's a little bit easier because usually people would always put their stairs from the first floor and then go up and see what they're working with. But for me, I like to go from the second floor to the first floor. So I have a little bit more of an idea of what I'm doing. If I have my walls like right here, I should have a decent sized foyer area so I can fit in the other things I need and also slash one. So we have a foyer area over here. I might do like a little bathroom on the side and then over here could be the general kitchen and dining room with a little breakfast nook right here. So kitchen, dining room, bathroom, living room area. And then upstairs, we usually have like a little bathroom right here. We'll make a tiny little hallway and we'll make this a bedroom right here. We'll close this off to be like a small little bathroom, like right here, hallway area, which I might make a little bit bigger now that I'm thinking. Close that off, hallway, bathroom, bedroom, bathroom, bedroom. But I could also make this a very small closet or an extra bathroom because technically this bedroom can have this bathroom 
And then this bedroom can have like this bathroom over here. And this could be the hallway bathroom. And then downstairs we have another bathroom down here, living room, kitchen, dining room, uh, foyer, and then general backyard, back porch. So now that we got the layouts already done and out the way, it is time to do the fun part, which is wallpapering the entire build, which I find very exciting because I get to play around with color just to see what I could possibly get. So I could go with maybe like a white color at the bottom just to be safe, to kind of play around with it and then change the top part to whatever I want. Oh, you know what I actually can do? I can use a lot of um the cats and dogs wallpaper. I forgot, this is one of my other favorite wallpapers I like to use a lot in The Sims because the style of it, it just screams good. And so I'll go with the blue at the top. And then what I'll do is maybe go with the white at the, keep it white at the bottom, but use the same wallpaper from cats and dogs. Now with the shape of this build, I'm gonna put the windows in the front and then kind of play around with it. So we'll go and use a bunch of the stuff from Strangerville, since technically I feel like this style of home makes sense. And we'll just put windows in different places. I'm gonna press F5 on my keyboard, so that way I can place it wherever I want. Hold down my Alt key, put it there, put a window here. Yeah, that looks kind of nice. And then I'll use another circular window. Let's look from the inside. And we'll go and put the windows where they need to be placed. I think I'll go and do this window right here. Put a window right here. And this is technically another bedroom. So we'll put one window right here, one window right here, here and there. This one doesn't really need a, a window. So we'll leave that blank. And this is technically a bathroom. So we'll put another window back here. Boom. Oh, we got to make it centered. So this one needs to be put right here. But right here is literally not the best place. So we won't put anything here. We'll put like some type of like tree or trellis or whatever to kind of block it. And then we need to put another door back here so it looks better. And I think I might actually use the same door that we used over here, but on this side. There we go. I never get a chance to use these bay windows because I never know how to like place them correctly, but I like how it looks. And we'll probably go with something different like this, black at the top and then white all around. And then you have like this nice little window opening right there. We do need to add some windows to the front and back so there's more ample lighting. And then we should be good. I might add two. And then we can add in our archway right over here. And we'll use the biggest one that we have, but I might use a small one right here. And then I'll use another one like right here. Another door needs to go right here for the bathroom, but in the middle so we can probably add like a shower tub combo or a sink. And this is not centered. Thank you very much. <laughs> And so we can do that there. And then upstairs, we gotta do a lot of things. So this is a bathroom. This is a bedroom, another bedroom. This will go in here. Actually, we'll make this the hallway bathroom since it's technically smaller. And we'll put this door here. And then this one can go right here. Oh, we need to cover up this part right here. I forgot about this little part right here. Let's add in all of our little windows in each and every corner. How could I forget about this? This little breakfast nook. How could I forget about this breakfast nook and the little bathroom upstairs? It may be too many windows, but that's okay. I have to say for the second home, I'm really happy how it turned out for the general structure, the window placement, the roof placement, and the general layout. But now that we're done with the second home, we can finally work on the last and final home of the day. And I was trying to think of a build that I wanted to do, and it just dawned to me. You know that one island in Brendalyn Bay called Dead Grass Discoveries? There's a museum there, and then like there's a lighthouse on the far end of that island. And I realized no one lives there because it's not a usable lot. However, your Sims can go up to the lighthouse, kiss, talk, do whatever they want. And I think your Sims can woohoo in there, but regardless, it's not usable. And I always thought, why not build the shells that we see in the surrounding background into livable homes? That way we have more variety of homes to live in in the Sims 4, besides the ones that the EA gives us, which are fine, but sometimes the background looks really, really good. And I'm not really 
definitely gonna use um, curved walls because they're buggy as ever and I don't like chains. So I'm gonna use a square instead because it's easier and I kind of like what it looks like in my opinion. But I have to say when building all these different types of structures for this video, I've learned a lot of how can I change the way I build, but also how can I stay in my roots of what I usually do, but branching out if that makes sense. But I like the general size of this home. It's not too big, it's not too small, but it's a good decent size to furnish down the line. And I think in the next like episode tutorial video where I like landscape or furnish, I wanna try and put all of these three houses on different sizes of lots. So that way it's easier and then I can upload individually to the gallery for you all to download. So if you all would like to see that, let me know, especially which house you want me to do first because I might do landscaping next and then do furnishing since I've already done the floor plan and put in the stairs and just kind of figuring out where things are going to go. So let me know in the comments below what you all think and I'll go from there. And usually when I think of different ideas, I always go back to like Pinterest. If you all are not using Pinterest for all of your build ideas, then what are you doing? Honestly, you do you, but I find Pinterest a very reliable source for inspiration, for like cooking recipes, building ideas, clothing ideas, color theory. Like there's so many good things on there that I have learned to utilize in my everyday gameplay for storytelling, sim creation, um, build inspiration. But normally when I look at that, I'm like, I can't recreate that. There's no way. So I'll like be inspired by it with the theme and then hope for the best it looks good and somewhat natural enough. And of course I do use the surrounding area of The Sims to think about how can I make this build fit in with the town? Like Brendalyn Bay is very coastal, beachy. So it has that very, uh, in my mind, Martha's Vineyard vibe, at least in like this section of the town. But Martha's Vineyard is so cool. Never been there, but I love the homes over there. I found one website that I cannot think of at the moment, but when I was watching Gilmore Girls, A Year in a Life, the last one before they stopped altogether, Cliffhanger was bougie crazy, bring it back. But at the end of that, not to spoil, the scene that they showed was really, really cool. And I'm like, I love Martha's Vineyard. It's cozy, it's nice, the air is just wonderful, I hope. And it's just, it's just good. But if I'm gonna go with the Martha's Vineyard vibe, I wanna use the coastal guardian fence from Cats and Dogs. And let me just tell you, Cats and Dogs is a great pack. We have cats and we have dogs and that's really much it. But the vibe of it is really good. I love the town. I love the Sims that live here, but I always felt like something was missing, like pet competitions. I love the vet clinic. I go there every once in a while, but hardly ever. I have like my Sims treat their animals there cause it's always so like hard to like get through the line of patience. So there's like little things about the Sims that I didn't know until I started playing with it more. And I was quite happy with the results of wanting to play with the packs all over again. Cause right now I'm replaying Discovery University in high school years. And so far it's getting good, but Regardless, this build is coming together. This will be the lighthouse part over here. And I actually wanna use one of the roof structures from Cats and Dogs, and I'll use the original. Not the originals, the original. So I'm gonna size it up using my bracket key, my right bracket key to size it up. And then I'm going to press Control 9 just to move it up a little bit slightly, so that way the end pieces are not showing down below. But I'm gonna change this watch into more of a blue color with this roof pattern, because for some reason, blue and brown just go really well together and it fits that nice coastal beachy vibe that I'm trying to go for. And in order to match this one with this piece right here, I'm gonna have to use the base game paneling, which honestly is like the perfect one to use, but we're gonna have to put it in blue so it matches a little bit better. And of course, I'm gonna have to wrap it around, kind of like around here, because the thing is what I really wanna do with this little lighthouse part is I wanna make the front part with stone. And honestly, sometimes when I look at houses in real life, like Martha's Vineyard, I see a lot of accents of stone in different parts of the home, which look really cool. And I'm gonna use the quiet cobbled one, but like more of like a gray color. And to make sure this is separated, I'm gonna use 
the column from Get Together because it looks like it matches enough and I kind of like it. But the best thing to do is actually just go ahead and add a trim to cover this separation up so it looks a little bit more even. So I'm gonna do the same trick that I did in the other home and just go ahead and put flat squares because I do want trim around the front part and also the back part. So we're gonna take the flat square and we're going to go down here and just lay out the land right there. Now, honestly, I could make this like the front door if I wanted to, or I can make this part the front door, which makes more sense. But at the end of the day, I'm gonna put a door here because this could technically be a laundry room, mud room type of situation. Like if we had garages in The Sims 4, I literally would put a garage right here. Like imagine garage right here, mud room, laundry room right here, little hallway or office, and then you're into the main house. But since we don't have cars, we're not doing that and I have no patience to go in that direction. Normally, I would probably do a bump out here. You know what, no. Let's delete this roof piece right here and I'm gonna take this fence and put it like right here in the middle. Cause the best way to kind of separate your roof pieces is just by using more roof pieces but just separating them so they look a little bit better. Of course, you can use half walls if you want to, which I might actually have to change if this plan does not work out correctly. But we're gonna put the roof piece right here. We're gonna move it a little bit more closer. Copy and pasta. We're gonna move it back, drag it all the way over here. And then we're gonna take this, actually copy this and then put it right here. Yeah, that looks really good. And then I think we should be able to add our fence back. No, because it's blocking everything. So we'll just go ahead and do half walls. That might be a similar size. 1.5 seems good enough. And we'll put that, that's too high. So we'll just do 1.0, seems normal enough. And we'll put it right there, unless one, Wait, 0.75 looks good. No, we'll go with this one instead because it looks a little bit better. We'll move them down just a tad bit so they're under these pieces. We'll delete this and put this back over here and then move them ever so slightly just down. Look, it's better now. Just a smidge. It took like 5,000 years, but we eventually got there in the end. So we just separated our roof pieces into three instead of whole one. So we have a little front part right here because the idea that I'm having is that I could put like a door, like this door right here in the front, but more of like in a white color and then change this to fit the theme all the way around and it looks pretty peachy. So now that we have that out the way, we can now do the layout, but before we even do the layout to be more smarter, to work smarter and not harder, as my parents always say, we are going to cut this in half and put something right here and I'm thinking in order to lead this all the way up to that, if I'm gonna make it a lighthouse, I could put a ladder, but then I can also make it into another room if I wanted to. So I'll leave this open and then I'll also leave this closed, but let's add in our staircases so that way we have a little bit of room to work with. So we'll put the stairs from the second floor to the first floor right around here. And then we'll add in a ladder from the second floor to the third floor. And I think we'll just go ahead and add it right around here. Looks good to me. We could turn this into like a little mini office right here and then close this up to be like a little mini closet of some type or a three by one bathroom that could also work. And then we'll turn this into, um, we'll make this little foyer area. It can be small, it can be fine. And then all this right here can be like the kitchen, dining room and we could turn this into a bathroom of some type and just make this the whole kitchen dining room area. No living room, because I feel like the Sim would not have a living room. They don't like technology as much where they feel like TV is wasting their years away. So they don't love television, basically. Their television is fishing the ocean and the open field that they have to their exposure. So for the second floor, we can definitely figure out of two bedrooms, but let's figure out this hallway situation because this will be a little bit tricky. So I could cut this in half and make this have a doorway right here. And then I could make this part a bedroom right around here. They have their own little balcony, which is nice. Or, or what I could do is make it slightly a little bit bigger, like right around here. And then this part right here needs to be cut in half. 
They could have a small little bathroom, which could be slightly bigger, like right, right here, bedroom, bathroom, and then they have another hallway leading to the front porch, front balcony, and that should be okay, because I could actually move the staircase up just by one. So I'm gonna have to delete this so that way it looks a little bit better. So let's take this staircase, move it forward, and then what I could do is I could put a door under the stairs and then lead it to the other room, which would be fine and your sims can walk through it just okay, but then it just wouldn't be right. So we'll leave it the way it is and we'll have this part open, which is perfect. And bada bing, bada boom, the layout is completely done. So we have a bathroom here, maybe another bathroom here, most likely, or a closet, um, office, reading room area, laundry room, kitchen and dining room bedroom, bathroom, hallway, and then this could be like another like attic, study room, whatever. And of course we have our back balcony and back porch, and then our front balcony and front porch at the bottom. Now for the window placement, it's gonna be a little bit tricky because the way I laid out everything may not make any sense, but hopefully it will look good. And I think we do actually have some good windows from cats and dogs that I could use. We do, okay. So I'll use these windows, which look perfectly fine. And this could technically be not a bathroom because it looks very awkward. But then again, we can cover it up with a curtain that fits. So we'll put this right here so it looks a little bit more uniformed. We'll take this window and we'll put one right here and then one right here. And then we'll add a window right here and there. Mm, that does not look uniformed. There we go, looks better. And I actually wanna be a little bit different and use a square, a square window. Cause I find with like a lot of older homes, they have very weird window placement, but also very weird window sizes. So I think having like a small little square window like right here could be really cool. I do wanna actually add windows on the little side right here. So it looks, Better. I might do a very long one if we do have one because this right here is a medium wall height wall and I think we do have one from cats and dogs that is the same style we do not so instead I will just use this little thing right here perfect see the home is a home away from home if you don't look at it too closely you can see the vision that I'm trying to work with here because when I landscape it it's gonna look significantly different because I'm gonna have a long big boy tree right here, a dirt pathway from here to here, maybe like a little gazebo right here, which now that I think about it, maybe I'll add a gazebo right here because then I could take this whole house and put it on a 40 by 30 lot. We always end up using the flat octagon roof diagonal and then at least I use that one and then I kind of drag it out to be a little bit bigger so I push it out by one on the side and then push it out by one in the back. And then I'm gonna use the same fence as I got from Cats and Dogs, go down to the floor, and then just wrap it all the way around so we can kind of get that octagon shape, but leave the front part for the stairs only. We're gonna click on the floor, page up, build the ceiling, and then we're gonna use the same octagonal roof piece that we used in the last house. We're gonna copy, put it towards the edge, and then just drag it out by one, and then it fits. But of course, we're gonna use the same roof pattern, move it down ever so slightly. And since this technically does not have like a fence room above it, we're gonna have to use the flat octagon floor again. But then just of course, drag it out one by one on the side, and then also in the front. Use the same trim, there we go. And then we need to go ahead and add in the columns all the way around. And then we need to add the columns all the way around the gazebo. Because then after that, you could add a dirt path from here to here, and then leading from here to all the way over there. All your trees, all your landscaping would look very luscious and wonderful. And it just comes together really, really well. So with all that being said, I do hope you all enjoyed today's tutorial video on how I build houses in The Sims 4. If you learned something from today, awesome. If you didn't, I am sorry. I do not know how to explain things very well, but this is usually how I build houses and they're a little bit scatterbrained, just like me. 
But either way, I will see you all in the next tutorial video, hopefully very soon. And let me know down in the comments below of which house do you like more? The first one, the second one, or the third one? But as always, I hope you all enjoyed it. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all next time. Bye!